How's it going guys? I hope everybody's doing well and thank you for being here watching the content that I provide. So today I'm actually reviewing here the brand new release from Godox, which is the ML30 Dancy Light, which I previously reviewed the uh, ML60 about 11 months or so. So I actually have both of them here and I'll try my best to show and answer any questions you guys might have being a one-stop shop video to watch so you don't have to go anywhere else to search for more answers. And this is why my videos are not short to serve for the exact purpose which all that needy gritty detail you guys look for that nobody else shows. So if you actually go to a Godox booth here, you're gonna be spending at least half an hour looking at this light. So don't go anywhere, I got a lot of stuff to cover here. And a quick disclosure here, the Godox sample this item for me to test it out. I'm not paid to say anything here, and this video is not sponsored by Godox. All my opinions are my own. There are many ways to purchase these lights here. The ML30, as they come as daylight only, or bicolor, or as a kit of two or three lights. I actually like the bicolor version, as it provides more flexibility, since I deal with tungsten lighting a lot, especially at weddings, music videos, corporate production. But keep in mind that the Godox ML30 daylight only will be twice as bright as the bicolor, since they don't share the LEDs with the tungsten ones. But I already have the daylight only here with the ML60, so I should be good. Also, as for any other bicolor light, the bicolor is always slightly more expensive, also to keep that in mind. And as you notice, this light is always yellow because I have it all the way down to 2800 degrees Kelvin to show you guys here because it's a bicolor light. And this one here is about 5600 and at 6500 it looks like this here. One of the differences between the ML60 and the ML30, either the bicolor or daylight, it doesn't matter. These lights here, they are Bluetooth capable, which are able to run via the app, the Godox Light app. And this one here cannot run through the app because it does not feature a Bluetooth inside, only remote control, which is also an additional separate purchase. So the menu of these lights here are slightly different. So in the ML60, you're going to have the menus for you to actually adjust the ID and the number and the channel of this remote control. And with this light here, all you got to do is open up the app and the light connects almost instantly. And just so you know, these lights cannot be controlled through the remote, only through the app. So I'm gonna go straight to the point here to cover something that you guys wanna know primarily, which is the fan noise, so I'm gonna get that out of the way here. So here I have the ML30 and the ML60 right here. They seem to be the same exact light, they should be the same exact thing, other than this is actually half of the power of the uh, ML60. But apparently the fan that they put in here, it should also be the same fan. All these lights here, they have silent fan, which is very quiet, but somehow the ML60 fan is actually 20%, I would guess 20 percent quiet in this light for some reason here but both of these lights they are very quiet but this one is slightly noisier than this one here so you would guess it would be the same exact fan because apparently it is by looking at under here it looks like it's the same fan right now all the fans here are off i'm going to be showing you guys here individually the fan noise from the ml60 the one that i have here and also the ml30bi which is the bicolor one i don't know what you're going to do but in my case here i will never be shutting off the fan because it's not going to be a problem my production even in this room here which is a dead quiet studio so i'm actually going to be keeping the fan on the way it is i'll never shut it off unless it is something extremely crucial that the light is right here and the camera and the mic is right here then i might consider that because it is always a good idea to keep the fan running at all times to maximize the longevity of the leds anyway with the fan on this light does not get even warm. I mean, it will never get hot. I tried this outside the ML60, it does not get hot. So with that said, the fan here and the uh, temperature of this light is not a problem. So continue with the fan noise here. I have in front of me here a condenser microphone, which is actually a very sensitive microphone. That's the way condenser microphones are. And of course, for the best sound, the closer you are to the mouth, the better you will sound, because if you pull the microphone away, you're gonna be introducing more ambient noise, and it will, it will cause you to actually raise the master on your recorder and this is how you get uh, unwanted sound into your recording so again the closer the microphone the better for you and every inch i can get close to my mouth i will depending on the situation even if i'm shooting wider the closer i bring the microphone the better so right now i have all the lights silent here with the fan off completely i'm gonna give you five seconds of quietness here before i actually turn on the fan so you can actually hear the difference so no fan at all Now I'm actually gonna be pointing the microphone directly at the light right there. It's about two feet away and the fan off and fan on. So right now let's exaggerate here. So I'm actually gonna be touching the microphone with the light here, as you can hear. So here's the fan that you're gonna hear from this light. You want to put it right here, it already makes a huge difference. 
and when I put it over there, it also makes a humongous difference. And again, the microphone is actually pointing at the light. So if the microphone is actually pointing at the subject right here, you can't hear a damn thing. And this is a very quiet place here. Now, I was also mentioning that I found that this fan here from the ML60 is slightly quieter than this one here. They're both silent fans, but this one here, I'll let you be the judge. So I'm going to be actually showing the ML30 fan first. So you let me know which one is quieter. I believe this one is here is a little bit quieter. It should be the same fan. I don't know why they would choose a different fan. I don't think it is because when I look at the uh, bottom here, it's the same black fan, the same exact size. It's pretty much the same size. As you can see here, the comparison in size, the uh, ML30 is only like the little silver part, you know, shorter than the uh, ML60 right here, as you can see. So maybe this way you can see better. So it's slightly smaller, slightly shorter. But it's the same diameter as you can see here. So that's the actual fan noise on. And by the way, if you actually have the light from 1% or 100%, it won't matter because the fan RPM is not going to get faster or louder. So the good news are it's the same exact noise from 100% all the way to 1%. Most cases, leave the fan on. I mean, you're welcome to turn it off, but you don't have to, which also uh, contributes in maximum longevity of the LED because, you know, if there is a fan here, turn it on because these fans are quiet and it's going to save your LED lifetime here for quite a long time. Because LEDs, they hate heat, just like hard drives also hate heat. Which brings me to the next thing here, because when you're actually using a modifier here, be careful with the uh, suffocation or overheating on the LED, especially those famous little Fresnel adapters that you guys put in here. Especially powerful lights like the Aperture 600 Pro or the 300 or any other brand, you know, powerful LED lights. As soon as I actually crank that up, the amount of heat that's going to build up in here is going to be ridiculous. So it kind of freaks me out every time I have to put that kind of thing here because the heat build up is ridiculous. And I know it's going to shorten the lifetime of my LED here. Now, this little lights here doesn't matter because all you're going to be putting here is regular soft boxes and all. And this light is only 30 watts and this one is only 60 watts. No big deal. Which also brings to another thing here. You're talking about a very portable light very tiny designed to fit in every single space because every time I have a corporate shoot they're gonna be putting on a certain lab in a particular room there the thing is so tight because I can't even fit a light stand in there so I usually have to have my assistant serving as a human stand to kind of uh, aim the light this way here which is light is perfect for so when you start adding big soft boxes here and make the system bigger it will completely defeat the purpose of a very compact and portable system and again this is only 30 watts so use the proper light if you want a big uh, soft box just to bring a 150 watt light 100 watt to 300 watt you know what i'm saying but for this kind of thing here the things that godox actually already offer for this light here which is the uh, silicone diffusers and also the uh, little soft box the two types of soft box here i think that's plenty for uh, anything you want to do with this light here not to mention the uh, reflector as well i wish they actually made a honeycomb grid to attach to that five uh, five and a half or five inch reflector because sometimes i don't want the wire to spread this wide so it would be awesome if they actually did the uh, little honeycomb grid because I can't find this anywhere, no B&H, no Amazon. I would actually have to put gaffer tape if I want to use such thing on the uh, reflector, right? So there are three ways to power this light here. You simply plug it in the wall with the included power supply here. And the second way, which you're probably going to be using most of the time with the Sony NPF battery here. And you can also use a V-mount battery. All you need is a D-tap cable that plugs right on the back of the light, just like this cable does here, because this light features a regular DC 2.1 barrel DC pl uh, plug here. And also again, this is a 30 watt light. This is a 60 watt light right here. Here, it requires 14 volts to power this light and this one here requires 16.8 volts and the v-mount battery usually they provide about 15 to 16 volts in power so there is always a good uh, tolerance in voltage you can go a couple volts over or under you're not gonna burn the light and I think in the manual somewhere that I've seen, even with the ML30, they even suggest you can actually do a V-mount. The ML60, I was sure, but this one here, because it's slightly less voltage for being 14 volts, you can still plug in the V-mount battery. I don't think you're going to damage the light whatsoever. As a matter of fact, let's do this right now. I'm going to unplug this light right here, and I'm going to be actually putting the uh, D-tap cable right here behind the uh, ML30. 
And there you go. The light turns on, no problem, no weird noises, no smoking, no anything like that. So, you know, you don't need to worry about anything. Speaking of color temperature here, I'm not worried at all about Godox uh, color temperature accuracy because a lot of the other YouTubers that have a Seconic uh, C100 color spectrometer, every single light from Godox that they review, including the uh, ML60, which uh, Curtis Judd did a fantastic job reviewing this light here. These lights are pretty much spot on. So at 5600 degrees Kelvin, it was about uh, 56.6 or something like that. So it's pretty much spot on. And it's not even going to 5700 degrees Kelvin. Another thing that you probably know, like every single LED light that you purchase, as soon as you unbox the light, they will always be slightly into the magenta cast. Only 0.3, at least the 60 is just 0.3 over the magenta so you're gonna need a uh, green gel to actually bring back to a uh, minus three back to the neutral position but as they say the more you use or burn in the led light the more that's gonna get out of the magenta cast and it's gonna be shifting towards green which is also a problem i would say i guess there's no such thing as a light that's gonna be falling on the zero like no correction whatsoever because it's either magenta or it's either green so it is what it is and i'm not sure if that's actually true because i still have lights here that i've been using for a long time and they still falling on the uh, magenta side and the lights that fall on the green side are the lights that already came like that. So I'm not sure if that's a gimmick or not. So before you guys get all too picky with this type of things, oh, this light is actually 0 0.7 degrees Kelvin over the 5600. And the, the thing's a little bit green, a little bit magenta. Every time you guys do a film or commercial, and everybody likes to have a particular look of a film, if it is a, uh, uh, a film in the desert, you guys want to do the, the, the weird color thing, or the matrix is all green, you know, those type of looks on the film, right? As soon as you start doing your artistry on your movie or commercial, you actually throw those numbers out of the window, meaning the uh, Kevin degree accuracy and also the slightly little green or magenta here. Now, if you do a regular color grading without any special effects, and then that's when you actually should be worrying about the accuracy of the thing. But what I've seen in many other uh, creative uh, artists like that, that do video and commercial, they completely change the look of the film now let's launch the Godox light app here. And again, keep in mind that this light here does not have a Bluetooth, so you will never be able to connect to the app. This is a brand new thing. This is why they released the uh, Godox ML30. And right now I don't have anything here. I'm gonna create a group right on the bottom here, press the plus sign here. I'm not gonna go into many details here because I already made three or four tutorials, a complete tutorial how to use this app here. So to keep the video short, I'm just gonna go to basics here to simply connect these lights here. So I'm gonna name this as the, uh, you know, ML30 and then save and then you click on the uh, thing that you just saved and then on the uh, top right it says add and connectable devices here so it says here the light cannot be scanned or connect it's because i just erased the group here this is why i did this on purpose so all i have to do here is to go to the menu and the first thing that appears is for you to actually reset the thing so i'm actually going to reset and do the same exact thing with this thing here and reset There you go, done. Close the menu. All right, click on add here, here they are. And now you click confirm. Please select the, okay. Gotta select the thing here, click confirm. I have too many lights, each light is a different thing. What are you gonna do? Just remember all this, you know? <laughs> Wait a second here. It doesn't take too long, it's just uh, doing its thing. There you go. And equipment combination finished. It's a weird way to say that, but that's... Uh, so, okay, so I know this one is already this light right here because I already know the uh, Bluetooth ID, so you can go from 0% to uh, all the way to 100%. And from 2800 degrees Kelvin to 6500 degrees Kelvin, the range of these apps here are for all the lights that are able to reach such a colder temperature or warmer temperature. This one here, it starts at 28, so until you reach 28, it's nothing's going to happen. And anything above... 65 nothing's gonna change to the color temperature unless you go from 65 and then you see the changes right here all the way to the uh, 2800 degrees kelvin so pretty much all i can do here is the color temperature and turn it on and turn it off the uh, green magenta correction because this is not an rgb light this is not going to be making any difference whatsoever here so it's not going to be changing anything it's not because the uh, there's a defect of a problem with the light or the app is messed up it's because you can't do this with a regular bicolor light much less the daylight only light
only RGB lights when they're using the CCT mode and then they borrow a little LED diodes to actually do the magenta and green correction. And to go back to the main control on the bottom left to press the device list and here are lights again. You want to control this one here, tap on this one and the same exact thing. You can change your color temperature, the uh, brightness and all. And again, press this button here, it goes back to the thing. You can also create groups uh, to control everything at the same time or lights as individuals so you can actually control each and every single one of them. So this one here, for example, I want this light to be at 8% and the other light, I want the brightness to be at uh, 4%. And then you go back there and then you can actually individually turn them off, turn them on, which is great. And again, they can control as group or as individual lights. Now we can also update these lights using the firmware. I wish I had a light here that's actually out of date. So I would love to see the progress here working this thing because every single light that I receive from Godox, the thing is already up to date, except the LD150R, which the firmware was actually uh, released. And then I got to see a little update going on here. Other than that, same thing that I always got here. The light is already updated. I wish I could show you guys the actual update process. So one cool thing about this app here is because it doesn't matter if you manually set this light to whatever, for example, 13%. Uh, I hope you can see this. I think you can. And then I'm going to drag this application all the way to 69% and the light is actually at 50% because the fan is off. So go to the menu here. 13% here. The fan is on. You can go all the way to 100% right now, right? So let's say they want to actually quit the app completely. And then I'm going to manually drop this down to 39% here. So let's open the Godox Light app. It's not going to throw this off the uh, setting that you just did. And then you click on your ML30 here. Wait a couple of seconds for this little light bulb to turn on, which means they are online. There you go. And then look what happens. It synchronizes to 39%. So it's not going to go jump into 70 some percent, 69 percent and mess with your exposure here. So this is a very nice thing because again, with the remote, as soon as you power it on, whatever setting they left the remote here, the light is going to go back to whatever percentage that it was there, which is not cool, right? As far as lighting accessory goes, of course, you can actually use the accessory that comes included in every single ML30 and ML60 that you buy. But Godox actually came up with these two optional uh, accessories here, which they are made of silicone, which they don't break. And you can actually shape this as a 360 degrees and the way it shines on the wall there, depending on the, uh, whatever creativity or whatever look they want to achieve. So you can actually have a little 360 when you actually punch it in inside like this here. It becomes a 180 degree light or something like that. The same thing with this here, you can actually use Use it this way and this one here is primarily designed to be acting as a soft box here so you actually can have a full diffusion as far as this thing will diffuse it's not like a soft box with a dual diffusion but i was actually very happy with the results because it does diffuse the light to a certain degree enough for a little key light something like that in case you don't have your big lights around right you can also push it in like this here and it can actually have the uh LED light closer to the light, which also changed the look on the uh, diffuser here. So you can actually do it this way or this way. And then to collapse, you simply do this here. It's out of the way completely, like this here. Same thing with this diffuser here. You simply press it down like this. It's out of the way. And you can also put this inside here. And it takes minimal space. I actually even found a case that fits this thing perfectly. Now, unfortunately, this case has been discontinued. I'll see what I can do. If I find something similar, I'll put it in the description. I can promise that. But this thing actually fits millimetrically perfect. So you actually put the uh, small one there first in the middle. And then look how this fits here. Isn't that crazy? And then you just uh, zip it up. And it's free from getting dirty or stained or anything like that. And beautiful case. And I almost forgot, this particular one here is made of silicone, except the front uh, diffuser here, which is made of a, of a harder material, some kind of a plastic thing going on. And in the event somebody or your assistant or even yourself, you actually manage to actually uh, get this uh, disconnected here, don't try to force with pliers because it will break this. So this button here consists of two pieces. If you have good nails, all you gotta do is to separate both pieces. So insert the uh, one that comes with a little splitter first, very gently into the hole here. And then when everything is aligned, simply uh, press down the other part here. So if this comes off, uh, it will be fixed very easily. Unfortunately, they're supposed to send me the K2 kit with the two lights here, but they send again the uh, two individual lights. I wish I had the actual kit here because it comes included with the Godox 
MLSF3030. And this is the sort of box that usually can be purchased separately for the uh, ML60. Since these lights are identically the same in the front here, you can actually use the sort of box either for the ML60 or the ML30s, including the sort of box, the uh, MLSF3030 will fit here and also will fit here. And there's another thing that everybody's gonna ask me or another YouTube creator. Okay, so hey, I have the ML60. Can I use the same accessories that go on the front here to the uh, ML30? Of course you can because these lights are identical in circumference and size here in diameter. And the same Gondox proprietary mount here is the same identical thing as the ML60. So again, whatever goes in here can go in here. No problem at all. Another thing that you guys are gonna definitely ask me in the comment section, how long can you actually run this light on battery? That depends how fresh your battery is, how much money you spend on the battery, because if you buy very cheap Sony NPF to knock off batteries, the uh, run time is gonna be very poor, but they are very nice aftermarket Sony NPF batteries that you can actually buy on Amazon or B&H or, or whatever you wanna do. Now this battery here that I have is excellent, and by the way, it even has the uh, little gauge meter right here which can tell the uh, voltage, remaining voltage. Well, I'm right now I'm at 7.3 volts, pretty cool. And over here, 7.4 volts, like any other Sony battery, 6.6 .6 amps or 6,600 milliamps. Now, this is what you have to pay attention to, the watt hour, the 48.8 watt hour this particular battery has. Since this light here requires a minimum of two batteries, so what you have to do is to calculate, for example, 48.8 times two, 97.6, and then this is a 30 or 35 watt, let's divide it by 30. So divided by 30, you're gonna be running this for about 3.2 hours at 100% with this quality Sony NPF battery. It doesn't even need to be an original Sony as long as it is a quality battery. So there's your runtime, 3.25 hours. And if you multiply by two, running at 50%, you're talking about 6.5 hours running with this light here, assuming this is a brand new battery and is in good condition. And another thing that you should not let happen to your battery is to let it drop all the way down to like nothing because you are hurting your cells. Try to avoid this as much as you can because this actually hurts the cell a lot. So my batteries here, they are very well conditioned. This is why they last a long time. I actually have Sony batteries, the original Sony from the year 2013, I still dare to use this at a wedding because I know this battery is not gonna crap out on me. You should see, at the end of the ceremony, I still have like, you know, 70%, 65% of, of the power of the battery, which is like almost like 10 years old. Now, if your battery does not have the watt hour information, it's very easy to calculate that. So that battery is uh, 7.4 volts. So let's go here, 7.4 and the amps, 6.6. .6. And then hit calculate, there you go, 48.84 watt hour. This is exactly close to what the back of the battery says. Now let's say you have a 14 amp V-mount battery and it's a 14 volt battery, calculate, that battery is gonna be 196 watt hours, which means if you have a 200 watt panel, you're gonna be running the light for about 53 minutes or 54 and a half minutes, something like that. I was gonna actually shoot a little something outside and this is Pennsylvania here, right now is winter and the temperature is actually minus six degrees Celsius, which is pretty freaking cold, not to mention it's a very windy day. So all the people that actually invited some models to actually do a little photo session, they say, hell no, no thanks. So I actually did a little something here indoors, my wife wanted to help me out and test with the lighting thing here. So I actually used the diffusion dome as a hair light and the soft tent as a key light because this is what will be close to a soft box, right? So I actually try to shoot her on the piano there so I did a little light and she was doing a little interview kind of a simulation and another thing shooting on the side over there so and other examples that I could give you here because this is what I can do right now because it is a very cold day outside so you know and a few other quick examples here I hope they were enough to satisfy you how the uh, lights look and everything so I actually was very impressed with the uh, little silicone diffusers here because I think they do a good job they don't do a hundred percent shadow elimination like a big soft box dome here but the, the diffusion was pretty satisfactory and another thing to keep in mind because this will actually spill light all over the place right because this are uh, pretty much light all over the place including on the back here to avoid light spill I simply put a flag up a considerable size to avoid lighting speeding on the back background there so this was only directing the light towards her and nothing was actually falling on the background so if you remove the flag you're gonna have light all over the place now with the inverse square law for example if you want to control the light or anything artistic that you want to do here the closer the light that it is the more artistic 
your photography or video will be. As soon as you back out the lights, you're gonna be lighting everything evenly, which is also very important. If you're shooting a group of like, you know, 10, 15 people in the studio, you gotta put the lights all the way on the back there as far as they will go, and everything is lit evenly. So you can actually avoid light spill by bringing the light very close because the distance from the light and the person's face here is this much, right? And the wall in the back there is at least 14 feet away from this, so the light difference hitting that wall is gonna be a lot weaker than the amount of light that's gonna be in the front of the person here. So again, as soon as you back out the light, you need more power, but you're gonna be actually hitting the background pretty hard. And bring the light close, you actually gonna have a more controllable exposure. Here, set your camera to read right here, right? And then this light is never gonna be bothered in the background, even if you see with your naked eye that the light is actually hitting the background the same way the soft box here. I don't have any grid here, but I have the light as close as possible to my face so it doesn't wash out the background there. Because as soon as I back out this light here, I'm gonna have to increase the power and more light is gonna pollute the room. So I hope you follow what I'm saying here. And the next thing I know people are gonna ask me here, oh, how I'm gonna use my Bowen soft box and my modifiers here because it has a proprietary Godox. Of course it has a proprietary mount because look at the size of the light, it's a very tiny little light and the Bowen's mount is something that's a lot larger than this light. So that's why it's not possible to make this light as a regular Bowen's mount light, makes sense. Thanks to Godox, this very cheap, inexpensive device here, you're talking about $25 and this whole thing is made of metal. This is a Godox S2 modifier or adapter to include your bonus mount accessories here. So all you have to do is to put the light in here. The first thing you have to do, this is also designed for speed light, so the first thing you gotta do is to remove the thing designed for flash put it away, and then you're supposed to have this big old circle right here with nothing in it, and then you just put the light in here. So all you have to do is to insert the silver side only. This is the only thing that this should touch the ML30, and then you tighten it here. You don't need to over tighten anything. Now here's something that you have to pay very close attention because it's very easy to forget. As soon as you have a big modifier right here, you are gonna be tempted to actually adjust the uh, uh, angle of the uh, soft box by grabbing the ML60 or the ML30. So grab from the S2 itself and then you make your adjustments right here. If you grab it from here, this thing is gonna slip this way here and your light is going to fall. So again, never grab the light mounted here, only through here, no problem. Under any circumstances, touch the light from here. This light is supposed to be floating right here. I'm serious, it's very easy to forget this. I actually did this yesterday, even though I do this a lot. And here's how it looks like in the front here. You can actually attach now your bonus modifiers. And this thing is so good. You see this little blue material here? That's the same blue material that features on the actual um, material here. So once you actually tighten, and you don't even have to tighten a lot, this thing is not drooping, it's not uh, sagging, it's not doing anything. Of course you're not gonna use a 55 inch size uh, modifier for this ML series here because they'll be silly and defeat the purpose, plus it's light and not powerful enough to actually cut through all that material there, right? Like a deep salt box. But this particular accessory here is designed for mounting the biggest modifier they can actually find. I have like a 65 inch parabolic uh, soft box from Godox by the way. That thing is a monster and this thing takes it like it is nothing. So once you set it up and tighten this down here, that soft box is not going anywhere. It's absolutely fantastic this thing here and this is only 25 bucks. I'm not sure how far I should go about demonstrating the uh, look and everything about the uh, Godox ML30 because I think most of you guys watching this video here, probably 90% of you guys are already familiar with the uh, Godox ML60. When you buy the single light kit, it comes included with the light itself, the reflector, the protective LED cap, make sure you actually remove this when the light is on. It's very easy to forget this thing is here for being transparent. The battery box, and two cables here, one long, one short. They both have a lock feature. Come with a little V-mount looking kind of straps to hold the power supply. Or you can also choose the Velcro depending on the kit that you buy. It comes with the Velcro or it will come with this. And the actual power supply. It does not come included with any batteries. You have to buy your own or have your own available to install in the light here. I'm not sure why Godox decided to go that route because to what I can see here, for example, b and it doesn't come with a carrying case. The ML60 does come with a carrying case, which is right there, it's perfect. Now these reflectors that come with these lights here, they're extremely lightweight and very durable. Just don't step on the reflector, otherwise we're asking for too much, right? And also this little waffle pattern design here allows the light to pretty much quadruple itself. So I'm actually shooting with a very dark lens. I'm actually at f4 using a 24 to 105 Canon lens. And uh, right now I'm at 2%. 
So let's go back to zero. Let me uh, turn off the light here. There you go. So I'm actually at 2% right here. So as soon as I put the reflector on the front here, look what happens. And let's do 10%. And now let's do 25%. And look at the damage that it does on the background there. Look at this. And at 100%, it's going to be ridiculously bright. I'm actually blowing up the uh, exposure there in the center. At 36%, shooting at f4 at ISO 640. So at 100% bare bulb, it's going to be evenly lighting the whole background there. This is actually a projection screen. This is not a white surface. It's a semi-gray surface. This is why it looks gray like that. So as soon as you put the reflector here, you actually have a lot of power, especially nowadays you guys like to film everything at f2.8, f1.8, or even f1.4, probably f0.5 if there was such thing, you guys probably use it. So this light here is a bicolor, and don't forget that it has half of the power of the ML30 being daylight locked only, because it doesn't share the uh, tungsten LEDs here. So the entire thing is going to be daylight LED, right? This one here, I'm at 5600 degrees Kelvin and let me drop it down to uh, 2800 degrees Kelvin let me actually kill the lights completely here so 2800 degrees Kelvin and also all the way to 6500 degrees Kelvin so the range here is pretty much everything you need super warm or super cool now right now I'm not sure if you can see the light is at 1% let me actually turn it off so 1% right there and I'm literally less than a foot away from this light here and shooting at f4 ISO 640 you can actually use this light bare bulb as you can see my face is properly exposed to what I can see on a little 7 inch monitor I'm pretty sure it is kind of okay this is when I actually get a little hot so you can actually with the bare bulb shoot something like this here and this is what it looks like with the diffuser I'm just showing you the uh, options that you have here as far as exposure goes so one percent five percent about ten percent here you can actually flatten this down here for a different look here but you pop it back out you don't have to remove the diffuser out of here just uh, grab it like this here since this is silicone it actually adheres to your hand very easily and to insert and remove each one of those diffusers, it's the same exact thing like any other modifier. So you gotta grab it from the back here because the little gray thing here is a different material. So this actually spins. And to mount it back here, grab it from the back again. And it mounts like this very easily. And the same thing with this one here. And since they rotate, this is actually what's gonna make sense to actually rotate the thing. You can actually do this way or the other way, right? So when you actually tilt this diffuser here, you notice that the... Uh, box is going to be in the way of the thing so you actually turn this way here so you actually have more space to actually continue to actually uh, tilt this down here so if this is not enough for you all you have to do is to place the light the opposite direction plug the cable back in here turn it back on and now you can actually tilt this all the way down like this here or all the way up and you can still use this this way here like hand holding the device even though this little uh, thing to accommodate your index finger here it's not a problem you just uh, can hold this way anyway so it still feels comfortable here with all the modifiers that Godox offers with the uh, silicone diffusers plus the reflector and including the bonus mount you can actually attach this light here by buying the uh, optional Godox S2 adapter it's very easy to always forget that this thing also features an umbrella hole here which you can easily slide the umbrella here now for the uh, best results don't use the reflector because it causes a hot spot so you're not going to be using the whole surface the whole real state of the umbrella so keep the umbrella as far away as possible in a fashion that you actually light the whole umbrella so you have a bigger source of light so the back of the panel here is extremely easy you just power the light like this here the power button is right there right now the light is at zero percent and the fan does not turn on regardless of the fan settings on the menu so to start the fan or to increase the brightness of the light is from one percent to one percent increments all the way to hundred percent and when you actually are at 43 percent for example to retain that settings simply press this button in goes back to zero to shut it off you press it back again it goes back to the 43 percent be careful not to turn because as soon as you turn it doesn't work anymore so make sure you are pressing firmly in very carefully and then it restores the settings and here's the color temperature from 2800 degrees kelvin in 100 degree increments all the way to 6500 degrees kelvin now to access the menu is extremely simple press this button on the left here the bluetooth off or the bluetooth id and also the option to reset 
pressing here is going to reset, in which you're going to have to reconnect the light again when you're using the Godox app. Next, you turn on or off the fan is right here. Turn it off right here. The fan is off. You cannot go higher than 50%. It stops right here. So you got to go back there. Turn the fan back to on. And then you can actually go 51, 52, or 70, 100%, whatever you want to do. And the next one is the effects, which this light here offers three additional effects for being bicolor capable. Actually, I'm going to go ahead here and show you guys the effects to see if they're useful to you or not. So right now we have the uh, lightning, which is the option number one. So to select the effects, you just turn the knob here. And number two, press it in. That's the option number two for the lighting. Number three. Next will be the flash effect. Number two. Number three. Next one will be the broken bulb, the bad bulb. This one might take a while, I guess. There you go. Option number two. And three. Next one is the television. Option number two. And three. Next one will be the candle. Option two. Option three. Next one will be fire. I'm assuming this type of fire here, for example, the two and three is with some wind option simulation. And the number one is more like a calm kind of fire kind of thing, like hardly any breeze on it. And the last one will be fireworks. A true color fireworks, by the way. Option number two. And three. And that's pretty much it for the effects. So that's the end of my review here. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to comment or ask any questions, I'll make sure to respond to everything that I see here. If you want to subscribe to this channel for more contents like this, please do so. I would really appreciate it. So once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.